I must be going crazy. I can see a town that doesn't exist. My name is Samuel Baker. I'm a Yellowstone National Park Ranger and I need some advice. I've spent my entire career fighting wildfires for the National Park Service, and after two decades in the field, I thought I'd seen everything. Then about four hours ago, an entire town just appeared in the middle of Yellowstone National Park. And the other ranger and I are the only ones who've been in it. And we're not alone, however, as you might expect from something appearing out of nowhere inside one of America's most famous parks. The town is home to many people, and some of whom have been here for years. They all seem perfectly normal, but... But they aren't aware that they live inside a national park. My partner Thomas was the first to notice the town. He'd driven into the valley a few hours before dawn one morning and saw a brand new sign on the road. Welcome to Hungry Horse, it read. When he drove past the next bend in the road, he saw the motel. And that's when he turned around to come and get me. The two of us had driven up the valley together in our trusty old Chevy Blazer and taken the long way around because we hadn't wanted to pass through the town until we were sure what it was. We parked at the base of the mountain and hiked up. We walked across the railroad tracks and passed a small gas station with a lone oil drum full of diesel fuel and another filled with water. The street was lined with old cars, some of which looked like they'd been there for a while, others which had probably just arrived that morning. Hungry Horse wasn't a ghost town or even abandoned. It was thriving. Thomas and I entered the town cautiously because despite appearances, the place could be dangerous. While we didn't run into any trouble, we did notice that everyone seemed indifferent to the fact that they appeared out of nowhere. Most of them ignored us completely, although a few gave us strange looks. Some of these people look familiar, I said, looking over at Thomas. He nodded. I know what you mean, Sam. I recognized a couple people in the diner, too. It's, it's weird. Those words echoed in my head as I watched a man carrying a bucket walk down the sidewalk. It's weird, I repeated silently to myself. My eyes followed his movements. The man carried himself with confidence and purpose, but he never looked up at where he was walking. Instead, he stared straight ahead and continued forward without looking back once. He disappeared around the corner of a building and I noticed another person staring directly at me. He was tall and thin wearing a black hiking jacket. His face was pale and he was bald. He was standing in the doorway of a small coffee shop. He reminded me of a missing hiker that we had been searching for last week. And that's when I realized why I recognized some of the people here. They're all people who have vanished from national parks. That's how we found out that almost every single person in Hungry Horse had been reported missing from national parks. We, we spoke to everyone we could find. Some refused to talk, others were friendly enough, but none of them knew anything about why they were there. As far as they were concerned, they lived in Hungry Horse, Montana. They weren't sure exactly when they arrived there. A lot of them couldn't remember much before arriving in Hungry Horse. They also told us that they'd been here for years. Many of them had been born and raised in the town and believed it was the real deal. They all knew the townsfolk by name and went to school with them. One woman, an older lady named Irene, told us that she had no idea that she'd been reported missing. She worked at the local hardware store and she'd been living in Hungry Horse for more than 45 years. What about your husband? I asked. Do you have children? Grandchildren? She shook her head. No, I never married. How do you feel about being here? I mean, do you miss anywhere else? Your family, maybe. Again, she shook her head. Not really. This is my home. As far as she knew, this was the only home she'd ever known. I tried to ask if she missed her family, but she just smiled and told me her family was right here in Hungry Horse, Montana. We thanked her and left the hardware store, hopping back into our park ranger truck that we drove deep into town. I don't like this, Sammy, Thomas said. I had a feeling of being watched ever since we entered town. I looked over to him. He was staring at a man standing by a large semi-trailer outside the diner. The man was holding a jug of milk. I couldn't help but think of the hiker that we'd found dead last week. Sam, you listening? I snapped back to reality and looked over at my partner. 
Thomas had started quivering in fear. I'm sorry, what, what did you say? I said, I think we should leave. I don't want to be here anymore. I looked around the town. There are some people here. So many people who shouldn't be here. All of them were perfectly normal. Some of them even knew each other. How could there be so many people in a town that doesn't exist? I agree. Let's go. We drove away from the town and back to the ranger cabin. Thomas was still shaking. I'm gonna call this in, he said. The whole thing's bullshit, but you better document it anyway. I mean, how can an entire town full of missing people just appear in the middle of Yellowstone? I nodded. Okay, I'll be in the cabin. I need some time to process all this shit. I sat down on the couch and I closed my eyes. It all felt... unreal. I kept thinking about the hiker that we'd found out in the woods last week. He died while out on a bike in the wilderness. He'd been alone, confused. But I just saw him alive and well in a town that doesn't exist. I opened my eyes and I looked around. I took in a deep breath and let it out. It smelled like wood smoke and pine. I stood up and started pacing the room. So what am I supposed to make of this? I asked myself. It's kind of sick joke. The government put a town in Yellowstone for some reason? What if it's not a town? Maybe it's a cover-up for something worse, I thought, before zoning out. There was a knock at the door. It startled me out of my daydream. Hey, man, I yelled. Two men came inside, both dressed in black suits. Are you the one in charge here? One of them asked. I looked at him and nodded. The guy was wearing a badge on his chest and a gun on his hip. Some kind of FBI agent. I had to talk to him. I don't know if they'll believe me, but what the fuck do I do? First off, let me clarify a few things from my first post. I was a wildland firefighter up until about a year ago when I decided I needed a change of pace. So they weren't FBI agents. Okay, They said that they are from a private company that deals with the otherworldly. I sat in front of the two men waiting for them to start asking questions. So, do you know why I've been assigned to the case? The taller of the two men asked. You're the only one in the park who knows anything about this. I nodded. Thomas also knows, but I think you guys already know that. It's pretty weird. The town you described doesn't exist. Not according to the GPS and satellite data. Uh, yeah, it does. I answered, surprised. That's a lie, second man said. He had short blonde hair and wore glasses. We checked every point on the map, every house, every business. There's nothing there. Bullshit! You can't tell me that you've been everywhere in the park and haven't noticed it, I said angrily. When I first came to the park, I saw the sign for Hungry Horse. I thought that it was a joke at first, but then I saw the motel, the gas station, the diner, the hardware store. I saw the people inside of them. The man with the glasses slowly stood. But we've checked every inch of the surrounding area. We've looked at aerial photos, satellite images, even flown over the valley with a helicopter. Well, maybe you should look again, because clearly you missed something. We did. There's nothing there. It's not possible. Okay, do I, do I have to fucking show you where it is myself? I asked. Both men exchanged glances. Then the shorter one nodded. Very well. You're so sure you've seen something unusual. We'll take you there. Thank you, I said. I got out of my chair and I followed the two men out of the cabin. They were in their early 50s, both with short hair, blue eyes. They were talking quietly to each other as I followed them out of the cabin to their unmarked car. Now, the man with the glasses said, if you could lead us to your town, sure, I replied. We drove deeper into the park. Our vehicle was equipped with a topographical GPS system, which made it easy to navigate through the rugged terrain. After an hour of driving, we came to a hill overlooking a wide valley. We passed the sign for Hungry Horse. You see that sign? I yelled. The men just looked at each other. I'm sorry, what? The shorter one asked. There's a sign here. It says Hungry Horse, right? The man shook his head. I don't see anything. He pulled off the road to stop right before the sign, turned off the engine and looked at me. Maybe we should get out and look again, he suggested. I agreed. I got out of the car and I ran over to the sign. It's right here, I shouted. 
He walked up behind me and looked over my shoulder. The hell is this? It's a sign. It says Hungry Horse. He looked at me and glared. I grabbed his arm and pulled him over to where I could see the sign. Can't you read? He pulled away and rolled his eyes. Read what? It says Hungry Horse. The hell are you talking about? I pointed at the sign. Look, the name of the town. The man sighed. There's no sign there. I got angry. I was about to yell at the agent when out of the corner of my eye I saw someone walking towards us from out of the woods in the direction of the town. It was Irene, the older woman from the hardware store. My eyes lit up and I pointed at her. Irene! I yelled out excitedly. The agent turned to face the old woman. His eyes widened in surprise and he opened his mouth to say something, but before he could, Irene hit him and sent him flying into a tree. You shouldn't have come back, Ranger, she hissed. With lightning speed, she charged the agent with glasses. Run! I yelled and jumped into the car. It was too late for him. Irene had already snapped his neck. I frantically ran back to the unmarked car, tried to start it. The engine sputtered and failed to turn over. Irene stood directly in front of me, blocking my path back to the cabin. The fuck are you? I yelled. You should never come back here, she said. You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. The hell is going on? She snarled and lunged forward. Her teeth had grown sharp and she was snapping at me, but I evaded her bite and rammed my fist into her stomach. Damn it, I yelled. I grabbed her shoulders and threw her into the side of the car. She slid across the hood and fell into the ground. I jumped across the car, kicked her once in the ribs, and I kill you, I said. She smiled. I've been dead for years, honey. I was about to punch her again when a hand grabbed my arm and yanked me backwards. I spun around and stared at the person who grabbed me. It's Thomas, my partner. He had followed the agents and I. The hell are you doing? I yelled. Don't be stupid. We have to get back to the cabin. I looked at him and I shook my head. We, we can't run from these things, I said flabbergasted. The hell's wrong with you? He slapped me hard across the face. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Just shut up. I rubbed my cheek and looked at Thomas in disbelief. The hell are you talking about? His eyes were wide open with panic. I heard Irene starting to get up. You have to leave now. Okay, right fucking now. He grabbed me by the collar and pushed me into the driver's seat of the dead agent's car. Get in, he yelled, and drive. It, what about you? You can't fight them anymore. You know how many rangers they've taken? Get out of here. Look, we just found out about the town yesterday. How do you know this shit? You just found out about the town. The fuck does that mean? Go. I'll keep Irene occupied. Just... Get back to the cabin, read my journal. I don't believe this shit. I know. I pulled a 180 and sped back down the road towards the cabin. I saw Thomas jump on Irene in the rearview mirror. It looked bigger than he usually does. He was standing on top of her, pinning her arms to the ground. Fuck you! Irene yelled. Thomas punched her in the face and she went limp. Stay down. Last thing I saw was Thomas running towards the town. I'm back at the cabin, reading through his journal. There's... There's just... so much... I never knew about him. Hey guys, it's still hot out. Like, unreasonably hot out. And you know what's great when it's unreasonably hot out? Iced tea. So if you guys like iced tea, check out Ivory Monocle Tea. Uh, it's my wife's uh, loose leaf tea thing she does on Etsy. Etsy.com slash shop slash Ivory Monocle Tea. You can get a whole bunch of different kinds of teas on there. They can be made hot if you're insane, or they could be made cold if you live anywhere near the equator. So check out Etsy.com slash shop slash Ivory Monocle Tea, and you can get a whole bunch of different kinds of teas from the fruity kind to the caffeinated kind to the kind that's named after creepypasta things, even one that's named after me, my dark and stormy night. And if you ask, when you order that tea, you can get a little MCP dabbing sticker along with it. Oh, also, I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but I sign all the cards if they're like horror related teas. So if you ever wanted that, Check that out. That's uh, the only, I guess, the only place you can get it now. <laughs> so yeah, check it out. Etsy.com slash shop slash Ivory Monocle Tea. And as always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. Thank you so much. A very big thank you to 
Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Reaper 61167, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Dickie McQuickie, Sam High, Crusader Chocobo, Spooky Shell, Adam Maros, Grand Moth the Milky, Big Smoke 369, Captain Scurvy, Salty Irish Poet, Esteban, Braden Morris, Nate Cull, Horror Fan 1212, Hour Minute Second Time, Kyle Resnack, David Martin, Scarrington the Unkempt, Robert Malcolm, Angela, Spanky, Snoochie Boochie, Seclude, Lupita Galvin, That Creepy Chick, Tyler Fletcher, Merxenum, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier the Cheyenne, Demix, Sean Catabaker, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Rob Like Sharp Things, Cryolinian, Xavier Graphius, Lord Life's Best, Goring Tramagasy, Maria Walker, Emily Mitchell, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Eka Limchok, Dirt Diver 03. Matt Bach, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Hidden Tiger, Shelly J, Jeremy H, Psychomel, Nana, Deleted Account, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, William King, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Titanic Aries, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Sashi Sazaku, Cronut 509, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Benjamin Welverick, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Raphael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. As always, thank you guys so, so much because you guys help me do everything that I do here. You guys help pay authors for stories and commission stories and do everything that I can do to make this channel and make this podcast the best it could possibly be. So thank you all for supporting me here. And as always, everyone, sweet dreams. <laughs>